time to TV Bird Go 2, featuring more of my favourite bits from the series. First up, Talking Lima on Tropic of Capricorn. Some place in the National Park. Sandy needing the groin by a ghost on Emmerdale. <laughs> Archaeologist looks a bit like a peacock on Time Team. And a quick look at him. <laughs> and Charlie Slater shocked by his own beer gut on EastEnders. Hmm. What's that? <laughs> I wonder, has Peter Jones from Dragon's Den been up to this week? Yeah. I'm going to urinate in a funnel. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. Yes, it's Peter's brand new format, which is not anything like Dragon's Den. Not much. <laughs> American inventor. Of course, it being America, things are a little more extreme. This competition is mine. I am the American inventor, season two. 2007! I'm coming back with four yeses! You're yeah, right, calm down, mate. He <laughs> was pretty confident. Is Dusty? Yeah. He's sure he's gonna get four yeses for his special bike. Well, I say special bike. Just how special is that bike? And I invented the Ace Cycle. It's the most dynamic bicycle in the world. I've put a full shield over the wheel to make it safer and more visible. Now the bicycle is 100% more safe. It's the most intense ride you'll ever take. That bicycle is a patent-pending bicycle invented by you? No. <laughs> hmm. okay. No, OK, he's not invented the bike. What has he invented, then? But what have you invented? My invention is the wheel. He's invented the wheel! <laughs> Third time, too. <laughs> Who else we got? My name is Richard Desert Jr., and this is my father. Hello, my name's Richard Desert Sr. It's always nice to have a choice of desserts. <laughs> <laughs> what? what have they got up there, Steve? Our invention is called the fire escape suit. It's a safety device that allows a person to quickly and safely escape a burning structure. Fire escape suit, that's a good idea. I can see how that might catch on. Let's see it then. Richard Sr., can you hear me? <laughs> okay. I'm supposed to put this on and then be running out of my house, right? That's going to trap fire inside it. You can see and you can move. <laughs> the good thing about this is when you wear it in a fire, you still get burnt, but it keeps the juices in. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a cannibal's dream! Oven ready human, but the invention I thought was the least likely to succeed was that of Wigberto Delgado. Okay, my, my name is Wigberto Delgado. I invented the urinator, and it's going to change how we use the toilet all over the world. The urinator! Yeah. So, what's the idea behind that? The principle is it's for men to be able to urinate without having to lift up the toilet seat. I've got news for you, mate. We can. Mm. Sorry, darling. <laughs> it was Penguin Week with Nigel Marvin on Five, and Nigel was off to South Georgia to meet a colony of king penguins. Now, obviously, if you're surrounded by king penguins the whole time, they might start to get on your nerves. But really, there's no need for bad language. There's not just one or a few <laughs> king penguins. <laughs> Look at this. There's some <laughs> king penguin shit. <laughs> Will I ever find a king penguin? <laughs> At last, I found a king penguin with a distinguishing mark. Well, there's no need for bad language. Now, just what shows should the BBC be making? What was the great vision laid out by Lord Reith in 1927? How would you feel about seeing your favourite celebs dressed in skin-tight silver lycra, <laughs> then facing a huge wall, hurtling towards them with a most unusual hole in it? and all the while having to bend their bodies into the oddest shapes ever just to avoid being plunged into that pool of cold, cold water. <laughs> it's the Rethian vision that is. Hole in the wall! Bring on the wall! Bring on the wall! Bring on the wall! Bring on the wall! <laughs> a polystyrene wall with a hole in it that tries to knock celebrities into a paddling pool. <laughs> So, which top celebs they got for us? Please welcome Weather Girl Sean Lloyd and kids' favourite TV presenter and one half of Sam and Mark, it's Mark Rhodes! Woohoo! <laughs> and on Anton 
team, presenter and comedian Amy Ramey, and the other half of Sam and Mark, Sam Nixon. Yeah, you got a wall without a hole. <laughs> The thing is, the whole process of dressing up in the lycra, taking up the position, then being dumped in the water, it just seems so undignified. Well, it doesn't have to be, as Sean Lloyd proved. Bring on the wall! <laughs> I can't help thinking that if she'd done that a bit more often, a boyfriend might not have left her for a cheeky girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... <laughs> Sorry, Char. <laughs> Whilst on Emmerdale, someone was in trouble. Well, well, whose pants are on fire now? <laughs> and whose pants were on fire? <laughs> Rodney! Embarrassing when Mrs. Hitler calls. Hmm? You don't want people to know, so you pretend to be talking to someone else. Yeah, no, good. Uh, so my prognosis was 100% correct. Well, <laughs> it's a pleasure doing business with you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Hit uh, uh, Miggins. <laughs> <laughs> so, which brings us to our smallest amount of sick produced when being sick of the week. <laughs> Rise and shine. <laughs> that was a, a rather sinister turn of events on Emmerdale this week. Here you go. You are encroaching on my chutney patch. <laughs> no, not like that, no. Please. Edna, Edna was dealing chutney. Yeah, chutney in its purest form can be extremely addictive. First, Bob got hooked. Taste this. Now, now that is what I call chutney. That is, that is a, that is a taste sensation on the tongue. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, and we all know how it works. Jamie then got Nicola hooked on chutney. <laughs> oh, nice. Mm. What's in it? Opium. I just can't stop. Mm. Yeah, chutney. Chutney addiction is a big problem in our rural communities. <laughs> and it's starting to enter our cities, too. So, of course, it wasn't long before they decided to tackle the issue head-on with a storyline on The Bill. <laughs> Next time on The Bill. Molly, I've just come from your flat, and it looks like there's been some sort of fight. I saw your spoon. <laughs> Are you involved in chutney again? <laughs> I know she's indispensable. You know, there'll be some explanation for this. I just can't see Molly having anything to do with chutney. <laughs> Mr. Kirby! I'm arresting your suspicion of supply of chutney. <laughs> yeah. Chutney. Just say no. <laughs> this was the bill, and for a moment this week, it seemed like they were trying to sell me something. Davina, it's getting very difficult to believe anything you tell us. Look, he gave me this first of all, and then he gave me this. And I said to him that I didn't want them, but he insisted. Last piece of jewellery Ed he gave me was this. <laughs> I thought I'd tuned into the shopping channel. Davina, it's getting very difficult to believe anything you tell us. <laughs> he gave me this first of all, and then he gave me this. And I said to him that I didn't want them, but he insisted. <laughs> piece of jewellery Eddie gave me was this. Yeah, I'll have the ring, please. And, um, and the chopper matic hasn't turned up since before Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and how much are your Giorgio Zembelli handbags? What did you buy it for? £100. Is that all? For a Giorgio Zembelli handbag? I'll take four. <laughs> June Atkin was heading for retirement, so maybe she's demob happy, but she did seem in a rather childish mood. When I left you last night, I saw the DAC and the superintendent. They were kissing. <laughs> Ooh. 
superintendent in the DEAC, aka SSING. <laughs> that's not all, that's not all. I saw them kissing in the swimming pool. He <laughs> took her to a sweet shop, bought a bubble gum, and when she wasn't looking, he stuck it up her butt. <laughs> oh, grow up. You know, I was thinking the other day, what do the TV schedules really need? I thought, what we could really do with is an in-depth programme about cranes. This is Mean Machines. Today, we're looking at cranes. From rollers to floaters, from miniature to monumental. Yeah, but I've been tricked by this sort of programme before. <laughs> I bet it doesn't cover cranes on tracks. No lifting machine on Earth will escape our reach. Not even cranes on tracks. <laughs> It's me machines cranes, but I bet there isn't a crane to help me. You see, I've got a 360 ton solid steel roof that I want to raise, but I need to keep it horizontal at all costs. When you want to raise the roof, and the roof's 360 tons of solid steel that's got to be kept horizontal at all costs, it takes more than a mean machine to get the job done. It takes two. All right, fair enough. They've done cranes, they've done tunnel borers. I'd like to see a mean machines and the sort of machines you find around the house. This week, we're in the house for mean machines, ordinary household things. <laughs> First up, the toaster. <laughs> Ten feet with a knob to adjust the amount of time your bread takes to toast. <laughs> All fired up from a mighty 13 amp fuse. <laughs> toaster certainly is one mean machine. <laughs> the kettle boils water to 100 degrees centigrade, which can then be used to make coffee, tea, or soup in a cup, <laughs> making it one hell of a mean machine. <laughs> the toilet is one of the meanest machines in the household arsenal. Water stored in the cleverly positioned cistern is fed via a pipe. <laughs> For washing away your effluent, the toilet certainly is one mean machine. <laughs> but admittedly, it does struggle with cotton parts. I was most surprised to see Amanda Holden recreating the title sequence from Tales of the Unexpected on Wild at Heart this week. No, of course not. And it was very sad to see poor Amanda Holden die like that. And in a fire, too. I can't help thinking that it could have been avoided. Donna! Sarah! Can you hear me, Colin? Sorry. Oh, that's better. Oh. Mm. Oh. That's that. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. Yeah. 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 Good luck with the opportunity in Oxford, you do. Yeah. Say hi to Paul Potts. Mm. Love the teeth. Which brings us to our I Beg Your Pardon of the Week. I beg your pardon of the week. Since when does a duplicy let a woman tell him what to do? <laughs> What's the slowest method you've ever used to cook a chicken? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Takes about a day and a half, but the meat does come out lovely and tender. <laughs> This was on Best in Show on Five, which offered us a peek into the world of the competitive animal breeder. We met Paul and Nicky, who bred fancy chickens. And what do fancy chickens do to relax? You get attached to them. They're like children and just... 
couldn't see life without them, could we, really? I tend to like EastEnders as well. That one likes Emma Dale, then. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had one that liked Newsnight, but we ate it. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. If one chicken likes Emma Dale, the other likes EastEnders, how do they change channel? Well, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, change channel. Change channel for me. <laughs> That's the colour button. <laughs> oh, but... <Yeah>. Change channel. <laughs> now you've you pressed menu. <laughs> no one knows how to get out of that one. <laughs> yeah. Which brings us to. <laughs> Which brings us to our. Uh... TV announcement of the week. With the owner of cat number 513, please attend to your cat. It is eating the cat litter. I've just got this lovely new red scarf. Yeah, it's an early Christmas present from the wife. It is a bit long, though. I just... Where's the other end? It's the X Factor. I... <laughs> I think it's probably time for me to come clean and tell you who I'm backing. It's Owen. Yes, because, I don't know, I like his voice, I like his look, particularly that look he does when he's trying to get people to vote for him. And it's a look that I'm trying to cultivate myself. Someone will be heading home tonight, you know that, and I absolutely certainly is not him. Give us a call, I know I'm 6161 <laughs> Which brings us to our occasional item, the many faces of Louis Walsh. Number four, outrage. The many faces of Louis Walsh. Danny absolutely made the right decision by choosing that song for you. Because you're doing what you have to do, so you've got to protect your artist. And if Louis, if you don't like it, tough. There was a clever bit of detective work this week on Doctors. Hi. Let me guess, you had um, Rice Krispies for breakfast this morning. How did you know that? Very strong powers of deduction. And you got a little crispy Oh, bread. no. Yeah. <laughs> guess what I had for breakfast? Try up. No. If you look closely... <laughs> oh, I love doctors. Because they turn up people suffering all sorts of different diseases. I mean, take this fellow with questionnaire's disease. <laughs> that condition where you can only communicate in questions. Arthur? What are you doing here? It's about that young woman. Where is she? Can I see her? <laughs> Oh, I'd have to ring her first. Did she say anything to you? <laughs> About me, did she? Well, I didn't know whether to believe it. But don't you see it? Had a nice long sleep. What time was it? Six. So what are you going to do now? Keep handing out your leaflets? Do you think I should? I just said you'd got them earlier. Where's my suitcase? <laughs> <laughs> a sad case of questionnaire's disease. Well, I'm pleased to say he's made a full recovery and he's here now. Yeah, hello, Arthur. Are you talking to me? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, I'm so pleased you could make it along tonight. Oh, you know. 
You're looking a lot better. Am I? <laughs> All right, OK, you watch much telly? Why do you ask? <laughs> What's your favourite programme? Question time. <laughs> I, think, I think we'll leave it there. Now, have you ever wondered what's going on in Nick... Where's my suitcase? <laughs> Which brings us to our TV Burps Pride of Britain Award, awarded to someone who we feel represents the spirit of Britain today. This week it goes to Bianca Gascoigne for her work on MTV's The Celebrity Agency. TV Burps Pride of Britain. Look at her teeth. He's freezing. Oh my God. She's not loving me in a prank. <laughs> Well, there was a shocking high-speed accident on Albert Square this week. If you're of a nervous disposition, look away now. You can stick your job. You can stick your car. I'm running with a long <laughs> oh, Nasty. A number of tops ruined, several thongs rendered virtually useless. <laughs> nearly six squids worth of damage. <laughs> Where the Beals and the Masoods had been involved in a food fight. <laughs> yeah, and isn't it annoying when you're meant to throw some food at one person, mistake someone else for them, but it's too late to stop yourself and you throw the food at the wrong person? You can cook your food when we have finished our prep and not before! And if that woman comes in here, I won't be responsible for my own actions. Will you please you... Take me in? <laughs> Jane! <laughs> Peter, I'm really sorry. I thought it was her. Yeah, easy mistake to make. <laughs> they do look pretty similar, the young boy, Peter Beale, and the middle-aged Asian lady, Zainab Massoud. <laughs> In fact, I'm waiting for Paris Hilton to come through that door any minute so I can throw this custard pie at her. <laughs> oh, looks like it might be her now. <laughs> Paris Hilton. I understand, Harry. <laughs> Happens all the time. <laughs> there was a new character on the square this week. Now, sometimes they arrive in a black cab, sometimes they walk into the Queen Vic. This one just pitched up on the pavement. Hello, Jack. This a job. <laughs> yeah, a new knitted character, and Jack took pity on him and gave him a job at the club, advising on financial matters. Yes, with interest rates so low, Jack, if I were you, I'd remortgage and buy the money back into the business. Because you know the Chancellor reduced interest rates to half a percent this week, so it's all good. <laughs> Yeah, to be honest, I was a bit annoyed at the knitted character from EastEnders accepting that job because he's supposed to be working for me. Oi, knitted character, <laughs> you've done my VAT for this quarter. Um, I'll do it as soon as I've done Jack's accounts. If I don't get it in on time, I'll get a fine. All right, keep your hair on, Baldy. Don't talk to me like that. I'm your employer. All right, I'll do it. You're only picking on me because I'm smaller than you. <laughs> Just clear off. <laughs> Roxy's little... Roxy's little baby, Amy... I forgot my pencil. <laughs> Roxy's little baby Amy is really growing up. At only a few months old, she's capable of quite advanced hand movements. She's smiling at me. Yeah, you don't need to sound so flattered. She's been doing that a lot recently. Yeah? Yeah. She high-fived me the other day. Yeah, three-month-old baby already able to high-five. <laughs> yeah, she's a real streetwise kid. And you know what? It's gonna be our little secret, okay? Yeah? Yeah, nice one. Give me a high five. High five. High five, look. Woohoo, that's my girl. <laughs> yeah, I've got a baby. He's only two months. Here he is, look. Come on in. Yeah, all right, baby? Yo, how are you doing? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll change it later. Yeah, actually, it's not my turn. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's see what's going down at Rosemary Schrager's School for Cooks. Both teams are boning like pros. <laughs> Of course, with, <laughs> with food, it's all in the presentation, isn't it? You can cook exactly the same food as someone else, but if the presentation isn't quite right, you get marked down. I'm going to be really nitpicky here, because I feel that you've sort of taken it on the whole plate, so it looks rather big, doesn't it? Mm. I would have probably put it sort of slightly close together. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, put it yes, in a little yeah. bit. Just like even just so doing that yeah. changes it. Yeah, it makes all the difference. <laughs> See, I would have thought one way to really improve the presentation of that meal would be to throw a few chips on. <laughs> Chippy chips! <laughs> Some of the would-be chefs did struggle, though, with even the most basic procedures. I mean, I've got a steak and kidney pie here, cooked by Marie, who seemed a little bit gung-ho with the knife work. With an unfamiliar knife in her hands, it's not long before Marie slices more than her onion. Gary, yeah. Except that needs to be cleared up, please. Thank you. You've obviously never used a knife like this. When you use it like that, so be very, very careful. Don't get your hands too close, because it's quite dangerous. It's a wonderful knife yes, yeah, to do. Yeah. <laughs> take it slowly, all right? Just take it slowly. Even trim the nails. <laughs> Which brings us to our TV expert of the week. TV expert of the week. Adam Crew will test a model building on an earthquake simulator. To make it realistic, this model is built with spaghetti. <laughs> Adventures for Boys Now, in which Todd Carty and son James were given the opportunity of learning to drive a steam train. I learned so much about the workings of the steam train from this show. <laughs> <laughs> for instance, I found out where the whistle comes from. Yeah, it's all in the type of coal. <laughs> yeah, depending on the type of coal. Now, that's a bit of uh, old coal for a steam train. This is a bit of French coal. Uh, and this is a bit of old uh, British rail coal. We apologise for the delay. This is due to circumstances beyond our control. <laughs> Mr Todd Carty really threw himself into it, though. He even got himself a new look. All right. Yeah. Had enough of the smoke. Should we leave it? Yeah. Heil Hitler! <laughs> oh, yeah. He really rediscovered the child within himself, did Todd. James? Yeah? Cat. Why are you having me? <laughs> <laughs> you call that throw? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not rising to it. <laughs> I felt that, really, the two of them should pull their fingers out a bit more. On their mission, they'll need to keep the heat and flames going for one hour and ten minutes. Hold that in the door there and have a look around. Is the firebox clean apart from the coal you put in? Yeah, it looks pretty clean to me. OK, there's nobody in there asleep on the Nobody asleep, nobody having a kip. <laughs> oh, what are you doing with that? Sorry. Oh, sorry, Harry. Granny's remote control, heartbeats back. Mm. The story of crimes that were committed in the 60s, but that we are seeing now. <laughs> it was, of course, a simpler time in the 60s, a time when it was okay to pour tea into a woman's bra. It looks like we killed by the prosecution. <laughs> Two cups of tea. <laughs> it was nice to see love blossoming between Joe and an old girlfriend who turned up unexpectedly in Aidens Field. She kissed him whilst shaving and got some shaving foam on her face. <laughs> <laughs> it's pop time to say goodbye. Can't you wait until I've shaved? I've got an appointment. You headies don't wait. <laughs> 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 
later. Yeah, you bet. Oh, she's going in for another kiss. She'll get. Oh, she's... oh, dish. Got on her. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you bet. No, don't do that. You'll get oh. more shaving foam on your face. No. Yeah, you bet. No, don't do that. You'll get. Oh. She's caught in a vicious circle now. Yeah, you bet. See you later. Yeah. Yeah. Just give him a kiss and sling your up. <laughs> Elsewhere, Dawn had fallen for an out of towner, and ooh, he was ever so glamorous. Yes, I, I like Jim Morrison. I like Engelbert Humperdinck. Michael Rennie's good and David Frost. Uh, I like Sean Connery, but I also like Paul McCartney, but which is better? <laughs> George Best, Jim Morrison, Engelbert Humperdinck, Michael Rennie, David Frost, Sean Connery or Paul McCartney? There's only one way to find out. Why do you come here? <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll bite the end of that brush. <laughs> oh. Oh. everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to TV Burp Gold 2. Viagra overdose on Hole in the Wall. Bring on the wall! <laughs> ah! Angry fetus on interior rivalry. I'm not happy. <laughs> Window goat on Emmerdale. You have got the wrong end of the stick. <laughs> and Crab enjoys cult Saturday evening TV show on Natural World. <laughs> Bring on the wall! <laughs> Dancing on ice is back. <laughs> you know what my favourite bit is? The waving at the start. Nice to get a good bit of waving in. <laughs> Nice to have a wave. <laughs> Voice of the Ice Tony Gubber didn't seem to be quite sure about Colleen Nolan's costume. It's 30 years since the Nolans made that record. Colleen was 14. And with all those ostrich feathers, maybe we should expect an egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an egg? Maybe. And with all those ostrich feathers, maybe we should expect an egg. <laughs> It's a Nolan egg. <laughs> oh, I, I think it's hatching. What the, let me just get, get it. Oh, the, oh. <laughs> 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 you get the 
idea with that. <laughs> now, I wonder what it'd be like if you got married to yourself. <laughs> A bit like that, I suppose. <laughs> of course not. This was the winner of Ladette to Lady. And it's been a long journey for the Ladettes. And they've learnt a lot. The girls must each make an arrangement for the graduation ceremony. And Holly is already struggling with the names of certain flowers. What does it start with? I might get it. L. Lilies. No, I'm joking. Uh, Lithuanias. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a bunch of Lithuanians in our garden. Oh, yeah. mm. well, they do smell nice. <laughs> so it came time for the debriefing and an interview with Mrs. Harbord. Glamour model Louise came in for a bit of a dressing down over her topless work. Even if I was to continue the modelling, it doesn't last forever, and I've realised that I do have to get some mm. qualifications. This needs to go back to its owner. Let's close that. <laughs> That's a start. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering when that got to. <laughs> Keep some more nice and neat. <laughs> her work done for the day, Mrs. Harbour then took her two other hairstyles out for a walk. <laughs> and so to the big day, and the winner was. Nicole, but the others didn't go home empty-handed. No, they got a specially printed certificate. All three finalists received their diplomas for what they've achieved at Eggleston Hall. This is to say that you are a lady from Eggleston Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Word processing. <laughs> Led it to lady. <laughs> Certificate <laughs> and print. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> I've got one too. But I didn't do the course. <laughs> Which brings us to our TV highlight of the week. Sharks Attack Now, a show that didn't waste any time at all getting to the heart of the matter. Shark, primal predator. One of our deepest fears made flesh. But what really happens when sharks attack? You get bitten by a shark. <laughs> Why do sharks bite people? Because they taste good and are easier to catch than seals. <laughs> now, over recent weeks, I myself have been the victim of a number of shark attacks. <laughs> It all started with a bowl of shark fin soup. <laughs> but as the weeks went by, it became ever more ingenious. <laughs> it even snatched a much-loved pet from right under my nose. <laughs> and just last week, it hid in a washing-up bowl. <laughs> what I have noticed is it tends to attack me from this sort of area here. <laughs> Not sure why, so... How should I react if threatened by a shark? Once a shark gets here, I'm ready to engage it physically. Be that just pressing on it, pushing on it, striking at it. It all depends on the motivation. I've even gotten so far as going, I just put on my weapons. <laughs> That's right, you put on your Ryogan quick voting face. <laughs> I was surprised to learn that sharks can be troubled even before they're born. My arm up the uterus of a lemon shark in Belize, and I was helping deliver babies. I felt this bite. And it's gushing blood, but I realized I'd been bit by an unborn shark. Bitten by an unborn shark? <laughs> mm. oh, what, what's that? <laughs> a shark tail? What the? <laughs> Thank you. 
Which brings us to a TV Burp Poetry Corner. TV Burp Poetry Corner. Research biologist Mark Marks has spent his working life studying sharks. <laughs> Derek Akor is back with a new format, quite different to the old one where he used to go to places in a van at night looking for ghosts. Sam and I don't like the dark. Please, will you put the house lights up? <laughs> don't like the dark? <laughs> we spent three whole series stumbling about in the dark. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> Enid. 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 Who? Don't like the dark. It's the dark that made you what you are today, mate. But don't worry, Derek is back on flying form. I'm st starting with a, a gentleman, first off, and um, with this man, play who? Reg. And he's also mentioned Frank. Thank you. I can't watch that uniform. In his younger years, and I can see the uniform. In his younger years, please, I don't know what he was in the Air Force. I don't feel he was a pilot because of his attire, but he's keen to show me that. And he's transported back <laughs> into the older age in which he passed. He may not even be family, he may be just known to you. Uh, uh, Frank or Reg? Anyone? Okay. Could, yes, please, could you... Uh, microphone, bless. What do you say? Good afternoon. My, good afternoon. my father, his name was Hugh, and he was in the Air Force. Oh, and okay. he didn't fly, he was a civil engineer. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> but just as you're thinking, I know this format, it's just like the old Derek Akora format, only with the lights on, he throws a curveball. Right, I'm joined very graciously um, by uh, a male dog. I can say it's male. A male dog. Dog ghost! <laughs> yeah, the ghost of a dog. So, what message does this dog bring from the spirit world? Woof, 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 woof. <laughs> woof, 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 woof. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> but for some of the audience, meeting up with their dead pets again was not quite what they'd expected when they'd agreed to attend the show. It just shook me up a bit, really. It's just... It's not the sort of thing I thought would come through. I was expecting my dad or someone to come through, not my cat. Heston <laughs> Blumenthal was back with his Victorian feast. <laughs> I, I do like Heston Blumenthal. It's something about him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he had all sorts of guests on this week. I know exactly what that is. I can't... There's a caramel in there. Oh, yes. Toffee, burnt toast. Yeah, Toby Young. Yeah, I really like him too. I don't know why. <laughs> aim to recreate the great Victorian feasts. Great. I love learning new recipes so I can then cook them for my friends. Talk us through it, Heston. All I've done with this is made a consomme, froze it, ice filtered it overnight so it's really clear, then I just froze it again, put it in a centrifuge like a vegetable juice and it spun all of the clear broth from the ice and then I froze it again in the minus 80 freezer. <laughs> and all I needed to do after that was pop it in a freeze dryer <laughs> and then simply add gelatine and finish with Madeira. <laughs> Say again. <laughs> I did all that, but what I ended up with is, uh, is that. Yeah. I think my minus 80 freezer was playing up. Yeah. <laughs> I went into Curry's and asked for a new one and was escorted from the shop. <laughs> <laughs> I was most interested to hear what the Victorians did for entertainment back then, in the days before TV. Have you got any information about 
The Victorians love for jelly? The Victorians used to put jellies down the centre of their tables yeah. and then they would watch them wobble and that would be a form of amusement during the meal. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say we give it a go? amusing. <laughs> By the way, you're watching ITV1. <laughs> Heston was keen to recreate the magic shrinking potion drunk by Alice in Wonderland, which had a, a combination of most unusual flavours. This fictional drink caused Alice to shrink and contained the flavours of toffee, hot buttered toast, custard, cherry tart and turkey all in one glass. This was a magical drink that never even existed. Yeah, there may be a reason for that. <laughs> the good news is, he pulls it off. Here it is. My Alice in Wonderland drinky potion. Yeah, I've got one here. Let's give it a whirl. <laughs> <laughs> to a fraction of my normal size. Wait a minute. Down here behind the desk, that's where the... Oh, thanks, Nizzy Cat. Yeah, and, uh, sorry I shouted at you earlier. I'm getting big again. What a shock. Found out who does the sound at the end of the countdown tune. He's officially more daunting than the dentist. Ah. Glaucoma. <laughs> Have you had your eyes tested lately? No, 2020 vision me. Well, that glaucoma test is something else. They fire you in the eye with a sudden puff of air, like. Get off, Polly. Yeah, yeah. You gotta love him. I think my favourite bit of curry this week was Steve McDonald having a wee. <laughs> Always nice to see. <laughs> but the big story was the discovery of an unexploded German bomb. Come on. Oh my! It can't be. What? Well, I could be wrong, but I think that's a bomb. <laughs> what with the bomb and the talk of the Second World War, it reminded me a little bit of Dad's army. Thanks, everyone. You've been brilliant. Uh, what time is it? Thanks for Probably like me, when you're bored, you hook up the dog to the sofa and go chariot racing. <laughs> you can't do it every day now. <laughs> we all do it. Dog, sofa, chariot racing. <laughs> it's actually been considered for the Olympics. On your marks. <laughs> Get set. story of the day-to-day -day running of Chester Zoo, they've got some very talented animals. There was a penguin that did a sheep impression. Penguin numbers are in decline. Uh... <laughs> but the main focus this week was on poor Strolch, the South American spectacled bear who has the same problem as my nan. Yeah, neither of them are keen on taking their tablets. I'm just going to, um... 
take the inside of this pear out uh, and then what I'll do is I'll put the peanut butter in, mix it in with the tablet. It's just so it's, in a, uh, it's inside something that, and I can just pass it to him and hopefully he'll just eat it whole. Yeah, as I say, we do a similar thing for my nan. <laughs> She's only on one tablet a day. She has been since the 70s. What we do, we, uh, we crush up the tablet and we mix it with peanut butter and we stick it in a pear, all right? <laughs> then we take the pear and we stick that in a hollowed-out grapefruit. <laughs> We then hide the grapefruit inside a cantaloupe melon. <laughs> we put the cantaloupe melon inside... <laughs> inside a watermelon. <laughs> it does seem a bit of a palaver. <laughs> but if she didn't take that tablet and got pregnant, I'd never forgive myself. <laughs> He's back, and this time he's trying to fly over Mount Everest on a paramotor. Mm, it's an ambitious project, but safety first. I'd always plan this project to be ambitious but safe. The bottom line is, it's ambitious, but it's not safe. But well, one out of two ain't bad. <laughs> Bear's working with his pal Gilo, who's worked up a special motor that goes on his back to help him fly. So it must be pretty heavy. Gilo puts the equivalent of a small man and a hundred horsepower car engine on his back. <laughs> it's pretty heavy. <laughs> Let's see if we can take off. <laughs> Come on. Flap your arms. Flap your arms. Give us a hand here. <laughs> oh, no. No. Oh, oh. That is heavy. <laughs> And Gilo has to modify the engine to enable it to fly at high altitudes. As well as the weight of the paramotor, they're carrying 45 pounds of fuel, oxygen, communications kit and cameras. In total, it's 168 pounds, the equivalent of carrying a super middleweight boxer on your back. Mind <laughs> <laughs> up, Gilo! Right then, come on! <laughs> Give us a hand. Come on, Pat. Pat them. No, it's, it's no use. It's, it's not working. Well, how am I going to get on then? I don't know. How'd you get here? It's not my problem, is it? Yeah. Thanks, Ricky. Nice shorts. But all credit to Bear, he pulls it off. So, Gilo, what's your next big idea? I've got lots of things I really want to do as soon as I get back to England. Flying cars have always been a big dream of mine. <laughs> Flying cars. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> Channel 4's I Speak Animal Now, in which James French used telepathy to literally speak to animals with problems. Yeah, right. <laughs> First up was Nicole, who was having difficulty getting on her horse. Maybe there was a reason for that. Nicole was having a problem getting on her horse, Randy. <laughs> well... <laughs> Wait until you've calmed down a bit. <laughs> no. <laughs> Grow up. Randy's the horse's name. <laughs> Perhaps you'd better get James to have a word with him. Animal communication is literally the picking up of feelings of animals. <laughs> in What's it mean when he headbutts you, eh? Is that good? It seems to me he's saying, get lost, mind your own business. <laughs> which, uh, which brings us to our TV voiceover highlights of the week. TV voiceover highlights of the week. With his mouth full of teddies, Jumble's urinating seemed defiant. <laughs> Natural World Clever Monkeys Now, featuring Dave Attenborough. And it's true what they say, you do tend to get a bit more right-wing as you get older. Rivals and foreigners can be killed 
if you can catch them. <laughs> All right, Grandad, calm down. <laughs> this program <laughs> followed a group of capuchin monkeys and they had a surprisingly sophisticated society. For instance, they had regular trips to the monkey dentist. <laughs> yeah, that all seems clear. <laughs> I'll see you in six months. <laughs> I recognised a few faces amongst those monkeys. Yeah, there was Bruce Forsyth monkey. <laughs> Ricky Hatton monkey. <laughs> Kirk monkey off Corrie. <laughs> Nicola Monkey off Girls Aloud. <laughs> and Ant Monkey from Ant and Dick. <laughs> Wait a minute. Famous faces in a jungle. That rings a bell. Yes, it's I'm a pleb. Get me on TV again. <laughs> yeah. And here are some of the stars involved. The public, I think, probably best know me as uh, Mr. Sulu from Star Trek. Because that's the only thing you've been in. <laughs> Who else? The public will probably know me as Mickey Miller from EastEnders. Because that's the only <laughs> thing that you've been in. <laughs> then, of course, there's Timmy Mallet. Hard at times to remember that he used to be a children's entertainer. Brilliant! Absolutely, absolutely! <laughs> Thanks, yeah, put your trousers up and push off. <laughs> <laughs> now, if the Earth was able to give birth, I wonder who or what it would give birth to. <laughs> push! <laughs> push! <laughs> One last push, come on. <laughs> push! <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's that bloke from <laughs> Dollar. <laughs> David Van Day is immediately won over the British public. Make a good meal out of it. After three, good, we'll be full up. I'll be going, oh, seconds, he wants seconds. <laughs> I shall be the cock of the camp. <laughs> I think you already are, Dave. <laughs> now, what do you do if you can't whistle? Wit word. <laughs> Wit word. <laughs> this was Snog Mary Avoid. The Make Under show in which brassy birds are made under to look more normal. <laughs> First up was Martha. She was out to prove something once and for all. Why have you come for a Make Under? Because I want to prove everybody who says, oh, she's pretty with all her makeup on, but you don't know how she looks without makeup. I want to show those people how do I actually look without makeup. Well, take your makeup off your daft cow. <laughs> Then there was Jay, whose role model was Britney Spears, and she had her down to a T. I'm doing a Britney Spears tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute, I recognise that face. Is it? No, it can't be. Mum? I think it's kind of hit home that Harry... Harry was embarrassed by his mum, and that kind of upset me a little bit. And I thought, you know, he's, 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 a, little, he's got a lot going on at his age. The last thing he's still with is being embarrassed of his mum. Yeah, a bit embarrassing still. She's family. <laughs> Mum took the Make Under advice to heart and toned it down. So has the Make Under changed you for good? It's a big step, and if it wasn't for me coming in here, I wouldn't have done it. I would have been too scared to, to take the plunge. I've been hiding behind that for so long. So no more flashing your bits, then? Nah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Although there was a slight caveat to that promise. So no more flashing your bits, then? Nah. Well, I can't help it from drunk. <laughs> <laughs> One day at a time. I wonder what my mum's up to now. What's for dinner? Nuggets. <laughs>